Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for this day, and I thank you for all the seniors here, Father, as they're being recognized for um, all the accomplishments that they've had this year. And I just pray that you would bless them now and, and in their, the rest of their lives, if, as they go to college, Father, that they would just be a light in this, this dark world, Father, and that all the glory would be given to you and that you would be praised. And I just, I love you so much, and I praise you now in Jesus' name, amen. presented unto us. 
but most importantly, the God they introduced. The omniscient and ever-present Lord, who tends the lilies of the field and yet numbers the very hairs in our head. The same God who created the universe have spoken word and yet cared enough for us. He sent his perfect only son, the Lord Jesus, to be cruelly murdered by the hands of sinners for our own sin. The God that on the third day rose from the grave, breaking the chains of death, who now sits at the right hand of the Father, and we wait for his imminent return. To him be the glory of this moment. And with that, welcome to the graduation of the class of 1999.
to do is called um, Open My Eyes. We had originally wrote this at um, the beginning of the year when we had Discovery Days, but I think it's even more applicable now as it's such a turning point in our lives because God has this wonderful plan for all of us, and all we have to do is just open our hearts and open our eyes, and He'll just He'll just give us this this wonderful will in His life that is just exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. I wish to uh, 
thank Mr. Kathy, the board of directors, the administrators, faculty, honored guests, which you are, and our most honored guest, class of uh, 99. Before I get started, I'd like to uh, see the hand, so look around beside you of all the people that you have sat through at least one really boring commencement address in your lifetime. <laughs> now, who am I to break tradition? You know, that's what I want. I'll fit right in, so hang in there with it. During the baby boom era coming up, you had a lot of folks on TV during the 60s doing uh, situation comedies and that kind of thing. A lot of us would remember uh, Jackie Gleason and uh, Dick Van Dyke and a lot of those shows. One of the shows that was on during that time was a guy by the name of Danny Thomas. I didn't like his name very well or his show real well, but his name fits tonight because I want you to go out from this place with a brief little talk about being Danny Thomas type of Christians. Being, being like Daniel and being like Thomas all at the same time. I want to take you back very quickly and for those folks who teach history, here we go guys, you're going to love it. It's 605 B.C. And with that world, there was a triangle of power going on. The world was strangled in a triangle. One was an old, old power of Egypt. And then another power that had come after Egypt was very strong was Assyria. Not Syria, but Assyria. And then you had an upstart power called Babylon starting. And Babylon decided we're going to create more land for ourselves and uh, do real well by putting down some of these old powers. And so a guy by the name of Nebuchadnezzar was sent out. He was a general and he was a son of Nebuchadnezzar. And he sent his son out to do his bidding. When he came into the, what we would call the Middle East today, he was on the north end of the Middle East, and there he found a coalition of the Assyrians joined together with Pharaoh Necho of Egypt. And there they had a huge battle, the Battle of Carchemish. And the Battle of Carchemish was a decisive victory for the Babylonians. They put down forever the Assyrians and they put the Egyptians to flight all the way down through what we would call today Palestine or Israel. Nebuchadnezzar was running them literally down and back home. And so as they're running back that direction, he looked around Palestine and said, Ah, while I'm in the hood, I may as well do some good here. I'll take some spoils and I'll take some people back to Babylon with me. In the midst of doing that, he found out that his father had died. All at once, he was the emperor, and that gave him even more reason to take folks back. Because the Babylonians did captivity very differently than we would think of making slaves today. What he would do is that he would take the guys and go into an area, take the city, and then find the elite, the smartest, the best, the most astute that he could find, and he would pluck them out of their society, take them back to Babylon, put them in the Babylonian University for three years to earn, learn Chaldean, to learn the uh, science of mathematics. Uh, physicians were trained this way, especially astronomers, and if they passed for three long years, hard years, they were put into a new cast of people a cast of people that you'll remember their name clear down through the ages as the Magi. Years later, it was those people looking up a star in the east that saw a star and eventually rested over Bethlehem. Into that cast of people, the Israelites were thrown in. Now with that, you're going to find in Daniel chapter 1, I know you can't read it, so I'll read it to you. Here it comes. Now from among those sons of Judah, were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And to them the chief of the eunuchs gave names. To Daniel he gave the name Belshazzar. To Hananiah was Shadrach. To Mishael was uh, Meshach. And to Azariah was Abednego. And with that you find their names have been changed. Now, during your baccalaureate class, you heard about Meshach and Abednego 
and those guys getting ready to go into a fiery furnace. I want to talk about the first guy, Daniel. For Daniel, it says great words, and this is what you're going to go out with today. Daniel is, means God is my judge, and literally it says in verse number 8, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. For these Hebrew children had a problem. They were plucked out of their society. They were put into a new society. And all at once, the peer pressure was fit in. Man, suck it up. Fit in where you can. Hush, you're a slave. What have you got to say? Be where you are. Bloom where you're planted. I always love that. Bloom where you're planted. Never felt that way. Always felt like you kind of will where you're thrown. <laughs> Just kind of throw over it. But the problem was, all the king's delicacies are out here. These are the elite. These are the smartest and the best. And so you're supposed to eat all this stuff. And all it was was ham sandwiches from stem to stern. No little Circle K, little kosher on that thing at all. What, is, what are they to do? Well, it says Daniel. It doesn't say the other three. Now, the other three stood up later. It says Daniel purposed in his heart. Now, he purposed in his heart not just to you know, do like we would do as evangelicals and say we're going to vote Nebuchadnezzar out. We're going to do something really radical. We're not going to do anything. We're going to back off and, and uh, isolate ourselves. No, he gave an alternative and an interesting alternative. He says, no, give us a test. We'll eat our kind of food, and if we come out healthier, then can we continue eating that way? And they said, fine. But Daniel purposed in his heart. The other verses I have in mind is a New Testament verse. And those New Testament verses come from John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And in John 20, Christ has been crucified. He's buried. He has arisen from the dead. And he appears to most of his disciples. Here's what it says in John chapter 20. Verse number 19. And when on the same evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, and locked by the way, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, and Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace, dudes. Okay? He said, Peace be with you. Shalom. Shalom be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and his disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. I bet. And so Jesus said unto them, Peace be to you, and as the Father sent me, so I send you just as well. Now, here's the fun part. Verse 24. Now Thomas, called one of the twelve, and he was also called a twin, was not with them when Jesus came. There's a lot in that. We don't know why he wasn't there, but Thomas just wasn't there. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. If you break that down in Greek, it means they kept on saying, We've seen the Lord. We've seen the Lord. Get with it, man. Come on. We have seen the Lord. And so he said to them, Unless I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, unless I put my finger into the print of those nails, unless my hand it goes into his side, I will not believe. I'm just not going to believe it. I won't, I won't, I won't. And they said, believe, believe, we all did. Believe it. Then it says in verse 26, and after eight days, his disciples were again inside. Now, I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you've been around a bunch of uh, good-meaning Christians before. I'm sure you guys have for years here at this institution. But to be eight days with people kept on saying, Oh, man, just go with the spiritual flow. If you can't feel it, just kind of jump in and fake it. But just go with it, man. Don't go against it. Just go with this thing for eight days. Days, he's saying, no, I won't. No, I won't. I want to see. After eight days, his disciples again were inside, and Thomas was with them this time. 
And Jesus came, and the doors being shut, and stood in the midst of them and said, Shalom to you. Peace to you. And then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it in my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. And then Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God. My Lord Kurios. My Lord Theos. Two high names of God. You're my Lord and my God now. The Danny Thomas thing. The Danny Thomas Christian is this. Be a Daniel class of 99. Whether you like it or not, whether you want it or not, you are the spiritual Christian elite. Whether you like that job or whether you don't, you're there. You're the best of the best. We're the best that we can produce. We have built into you the best that we possibly can do. And I hope you do a whole lot better job than we've done. Thank you. But you're the best. You're an elite. And like Daniel, all alone, whether it's in a dorm room, all alone, whether it's in a job, all alone, whether it's in an apartment, he purposed in his heart. He purposed in his heart. For God's will to be done, someone has to purpose within their heart to obey God no matter what. No matter if you look successful, no matter if you make a bunch of bucks, no matter if you feel secure, somebody has to be the one to stand up and say, I have purpose in my heart. This stand will cause others to have the strength to stand with you. And to stand with that one. Gang, men and women, you're that one. You are the one. Men and women of 99, you're that one. You're not the dirty dozen. You're the destined dozen. Whether you like it or not, people will know your background. The universities and colleges you go to, the jobs you go to will see that on your resume. They'll know what school you went to, and they will want to know, what do you think of this? Where do you take your stand? Be the one who stands. Good, good Christian folks send their kids off to school. Maybe not prepared like you. A lot of folks who don't believe in God at all, certainly don't believe in Christ, send their kids off to that same school. Those kids who don't know anything about God are going to look to you, men and women, and they're going to say, are you any different from me? Are you any different I wake up with hangovers. I wake up with guilt. I wake up with all this other stuff. Are you different? Are you just as empty as I am? Good meaning people, good meaning Christian folks will send their folks to the same schools. And they will say, I'm a Christian. I know I'm a Christian, but I just can't stand and be the first. But if someone would stand, I'll stand with them. That's your job. Like it or not, you are the elite. Someone has to purpose in your heart that you will obey God and follow Him. You're the ones. Also, not only to be a Daniel, but to be a Thomas. Like Thomas, we must see and believe God for ourselves. In the heat of life, you remember the song when the heat is on? Da -da -da. Okay. Well, the heat is on. When the heat is on in life, your daddy's faith isn't going to make much difference. In the heat of life, when you're all alone, out there in the job market, out there in the schools, your mama's faith, even though she's praying for you every day, isn't going to mean very much. Your preacher's faith, your church's faith, your old school's faith, your faculty and administration's faith isn't going to mean very much. At that point, like Thomas, you will have to come to the point and say, God, you are my God. You're just not my daddy's God anymore. I need you for me. On my own two feet, I need you. 
because I'm answering to you. There's no one behind my back at this school. There's no one behind my back at this job looking anymore over my shoulder. I need you, my Lord and my God. Class, honored guests, one last time before you exit this institution, let's give all of us a chance to break its dark because that's the whole purpose of this, is to look deep down inside. For Jesus Christ came to die for folks who need help. He came to die literally not for the ones who are just so spiritual that you just can't stand them, or you just can't stand yourself with all these sinners around. He came for those folks who needed Him, those folks who have a rough past, those folks who have made mistakes in times past, because all you can do with your past is beat yourself up. That's it. Just guilt yourself right into tears. You can't do it. God is a God of right now. You can look to the future, and boy, you guys have wonderful future. You're good. I've seen you. I've seen you on the athletic field. I've seen you in academics. You're good. Very good. Stand up against anybody. No kidding. But, but, my Lord and my God purpose deep down, great future, maybe, but you can't depend on that. What you depend on is right now. And that if you've never done this sincerely, deep down within your heart, and we're all included in this, is to grab hold of God right now and to realize that at one place at one time, Christ died on the cross. And a holy God looked all the way back to Adam and Eve's time and grabbed every sin that had ever been and pulled it this way and went clear down to the class of 99 right in here and pulled your sin this way. And at one place, at one time, Christ paid it all. At one place, at one time. And all you have to do is get off your ecclesiastical high horse and say, Lord God, I can't work well enough. I can't do enough good things. I can't snooze enough people to get to heaven. The only way that any of us get there is to ask Christ to forgive us of the wrong things we've done and accept the free gift that He died on the cross for us. Let's just take a moment. If you want to bow your heads, fine. If you want to look up, fine. If you want to stare, blankly, fine. But I want you to crawl inside and look inside just for a moment and say, if there's never been a time that I really came to grips with God and said, I could be the one in my job. I could be the one where God is for you right now, but I'm not the one. I haven't stood up for Him. And it's because I don't know if I really know Him. Tonight is the night. God is in this place, and God is willing to grab hold of you right now. If you sincerely say, deep down in your heart, Lord God, forgive me. I've done wrong things. And I want you to forgive me of those wrong things and come and live within my life. Forgive me. Help me, Father, to have a home in heaven when I die, but also a life with me in the here and now. Thank you, God, for coming into my life. Help me to live for you. Class of 99, you're good, good kids. We expect a bunch, and you don't have to live up to anything. We're proud of you, just as you sit there. You're good kids. Do the best that you possibly can. And do like Louis Pasteur at the end of his life. And he said, you've done all this wonderful stuff. He said, I did what I could do. Go out and do what you can do for God.
we're very proud at this time to award them their diplomas for, for completion of their studies here at Jupiter Christian School. Joel Andrew Bell. He played JV basketball, varsity basketball for three years, varsity soccer for three years. He was the sophomore class vice president, men's choir president. He was in the Key Club, went on the Guatemala missions trip this year, and has been the student body president for the last two years. Joel plans to attend the University of, South, of, excuse me, of Central Florida, where he will study business. Joel is eligible for the Bright Futures Merit Award of $1,800 per year.
that you have been there to help. Thank you for everything, all of you guys very much. To my brothers, Jerry and Jay, thanks for being great brothers to me. I don't know what I would have done without you guys. Thank you to all my aunts, uncles, and especially my grandparents. Thank you for always being there. And thanks for all the money that you gave to help send me to Guatemala. That was a special gift for me and a special gift for me. Thank you very much. To Coach Canberra, thanks for being such a good friend to me. I always remember our Wednesday night Bible studies and all the food we ate at your house. Thank you very much. I want to see you. To Coach Clark, thanks for being my friend and our class sponsor this year. It's been great playing ball for you and hanging out in your office. Thank you very much. To Miss Rogers, your friendship during my time here has meant so much to me. It was good to know that if ever I needed anything, you would always be there to help. Thank you so much. Oh, Miss Sherlock. Kimberly Nicole Ellis. Kim has run cross country for two years. She's played soccer. She's been a member of the choir, a member of Key Club, and she's played in band. She was the 11th grade class chaplain, and she participated in the Guatemalan missions trip this year. Kim will be attending Palm Beach Community College, where she will enter the dental hygiene program. Congratulations, Kim.
Matt was a four-year varsity soccer player, three years varsity baseball, two years varsity basketball. He has also been a member of the Key Club, one of the senior class presidents this year, and participated in the Guatemala missions trip. Matt will attend the University of Central Florida, where he will study business. Matt is eligible for the Bright Futures Merit Award of $1,800 a year. Congratulations, Matt. Well, it's finally over. I made it. I didn't make it alone. There are a lot of people in my life that have helped me. First, I thank my parents, because without them, I would be lost. Mom, thank you for always being there when I needed someone to talk to. Thanks for putting up with me and my friends. Thank you for always helping me get out of trouble. I'll miss you next year. I love you. Dad, even though we fight sometimes, I still appreciate everything you've done. Thanks for going to bat for me in the office when I've been in trouble. I think we've become a lot better friends recently. Thank you. TJ, thanks for always sticking with me. I value our friendship. Coach Clark and Coach Canterbury, thank you not only for teaching me athletics, but always going out of the way to be my friend. Clark, thanks for battling with me at the wrong times. And Canterbury, I want to thank you that you always invited us to your house, even though you always had to foot the food bill. Rogers, thanks for always loving and defending our class. I greatly appreciate it. Mr. Headley, I just want you to know that I have always respected you and considered you a friend. Tim Roo, thanks for being my best friend for 17 years. I wouldn't have made it without your help. I look forward to many more years of friendship. Joel and Shannon, thanks for always supporting me and being my friend. Joel, thanks for all the talks, and Shannon, thanks for all the advice about girls. I appreciate it. You've both been great friends. Maddie Young, thanks for all of your interesting stories in math class. I look forward to many more. I've been a true friend through it all. Kelly Lorraine Melvin. <laughs> Kelly participated in choir for two years. She was the Sisters in Christ president. She was a cheerleading manager. She's a member of the National Honor Society. She has been the boys basketball team statistician for the past two years, was the junior class treasurer and the assistant editor of the school newspaper. Kelly will attend Santa Fe Community College in Gainesville. She plans to study journalism or business there and then transfer to the University of Florida upon completion of her associate's degree. Kelly received a $500 scholarship from Dr. Michael Scherr, and she's also eligible for the Bright Futures Merit Award of $1,800 a year. Congratulations, Kelly. First and foremost, I would like to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for everything you have given me and done for me. You have blessed me in so many ways. You are the only constant in my life, and I just want to say thank you and I love you. To my grandparents, you have made so many sacrifices to raise me and mold me into the person I am today. I've never thanked you for that, but I am now. I also want to thank you for putting up with me for 10 years. I know I was a brat, but you loved me anyway. You guys are the greatest, and I love you with all my heart. To my brothers, Keith and Chip, my sister Karen, my sister in law, Kathy, and my nephew, Tyler. Thank you for all your support. Your love and friendship mean the world to me. I'm so glad you were able to come down and celebrate with me. I love you all. To Melanie and Scott, words cannot describe how much your friendship means to me. You have done so much for me and have always been there when I needed you. I don't know if Zachary is here tonight, but let him know that I love him and will miss hanging out with him. And you guys have to promise that you'll keep me updated on how fast Tyler is growing and send me pictures. I love you and I'll miss you all very much. To the Wolperts and the Andersons, thank you for bringing me into your family and treating me like one of your own. Your love and support have meant a lot to me. I'm glad I can call you my second family. To Alex and Kenny, thank you for being the best little brothers I ever had. I'll miss hanging out with you and talking and laughing about everything under the sun. Don't forget you can always crash at my place when you're in Gainesville. And I can't forget Alita, my best friend. Thanks for your listening ear and your realistic advice. Even though we'll be living a whopping 10 miles apart, remember that I'm always here for you. You can call me at any hour for anything or nothing at all. I love you. To Mrs. Faraday, I have to thank you for also making me a part of your family. You've been there through every up and down of my teenage life and were always able to help in some way. And Aaron, thank you for being such a sweetheart and always cheering me up. I'll miss you guys. 
And last but certainly not least, all my friends who travel from Northern Florida, your continuous love and encouragement for over 10 years has helped me in every way imaginable. Thank you for being here to help me celebrate one of the biggest moments of my life. I love you all. Andrew Dean Meyer. Andy has served as the publicity director for his class in both the ninth and the 10th grades, and he was his junior class vice president. Andy will attend Florida State University, where he will study criminal justice. Andy is eligible for the Bright Futures Merit Award of $1,800 a year. Congratulations, Andy. I just want to say that the last 13 years have been a lot of fun, and I hope for the next 13 years will be better. I want to thank my parents for all their love and support, and I'd like to apologize for all the stuff I stepped into here. I'm glad you stepped on me. I'd also like to thank the rest of my family for being there and giving me encouragement. Finally, I'd like to say goodbye to all my friends, and I want to know, let you know that I'm, I'm going to miss you a lot, and I really had a lot of fun getting to know all of you. I, I am going to ask you to pray for me for my future experiences. Finally, I just want to say, JCS football rules. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, varsity softball for four years. She has played varsity soccer for four years. Ran cross country for two years. Hope is a member of the National Honor Society. She's on the yearbook staff. She attended Girls State. She has been in choir for four years, all state choir, chamber singers, band, and the Brain Bowl. She is the key club president and this year's salutatory. attend Hillsdale College in Hillsdale, Michigan. She will study pre-law there. Hope received an $8,200 a year scholarship from Hillsdale. She was also awarded $200 from the American Legion Auxiliary, $1,000 from the Jupiter Women to Cuesta Club, $1,000 from the Presidential Community Leader Scholarship, $2,000 from the Palm Beach Gardens Medical Auxiliary, and $6,000 from the Community Foundation of Palm Beach and Martin Counties. Congratulations, Hope. Through all these years, you've all supported me from the front row to the back of the row. Thank you. I would like to thank my mom, dad, Trick and Wearsby for putting up with all my garbage and still love me. I love you all. A big thank you goes to my second moms, Rosie, Sandy, and Ruth, Betty. You're all the best. Thank you to Susan Tillis, the Penwells, and the JCS Music Department for helping me get through this last year. I made it! Thank you for all my, all my Stolen House friends and Sandy Cannon for changing my outlook on life. To my fellow Central Baptistites, thanks for being a big part of my growing up, or lack of it. Thanks also to my grandparents and uncle. And how could I forget Kiwi, Potato, Beardaze, Wizard, Curia, Three, Squeaker, Rookie, Venus, Abner, and poor, poor Jackie. Hang in there, guys. You'll make it. Timothy Jason Rue. Tim has competed in varsity soccer for the last four years. He played one year of JV basketball and three years of varsity basketball. He's also played varsity baseball and is a two-year Guatemala mission trip member. Tim will attend the University of Central Florida where he will study pre-med. Tim received a $1,000 scholarship from the Palm Beach Gardens Medical Auxiliary. 
Tim is also eligible for the Bright Futures Merit Award of $1,800 a year. Congratulations, Tim. Although sometimes I may disagree, I know that everything you tell me is the truth from my own faith. I know I can be a pain in the net, but what's life without me? I love you. Chris, even though you're a tool, I still love you. <laughs> Matt and Caleb, when I beat you, it's out of love. <laughs> Take care of me as a tool for me. I love you guys. To Lord Joel and Shannon, thanks for never leaving my side. You guys are more than I could ever ask for. Rogus? You still are and always will be our favorite teacher. We'll hit up another road trip this summer. Shay, thank you for our best friendship. I love you. We're going to pause for just a minute to see if... Shannon Lee Russell. <laughs> Shannon was a varsity cheerleader for three years. She spent two years as her class chaplain. She was the junior class publicity director and one of the senior class presidents this year. Uh, she was a varsity baseball statistician, varsity soccer statistician, and she played on the varsity girls basketball team this year. She spent four years in the high school choir, member of the Key Club, two years mission trip in Guatemala, and this year's homecoming queen. Shannon will attend the University of Central Florida, where she will pursue a degree in pre-med. Shannon is eligible for the Bright Futures Merit Award of $1,800 a year. Congratulations, Shannon. Thank you for being my best friend. I'm so grateful for our friendship. I don't know how I would have gotten through my senior year without you. Ms. Rogers, hold on and stop crying for one second so you can hear what I have to say. Thank you for believing in our class when no one else did. You'll always have a special place in my heart and I'll miss you greatly. Tony, thanks for making these past four months very special. I look forward to the many months to come. Jordan and Ian, thanks for always making me laugh. Take care of my sister, Summer and Sandy. Lindsay, Lindsay, and Katie. Summer and Sandy, even though I may not have always acted like it, I love you guys so much and I will miss you next year. Papa, thank you for always reading to me when I was little. I will always know the rest of your book by heart. I love you. Grandma and Grandpa, thanks for being such a godly example for me. You have shown me what a true Christian really is. I love you both. Mom, Dad, words could never express how much I appreciate all that you've done for me. Now I say you made me better. When I fell, you picked me up. And when I made mistakes, you always stood behind me. I love you both so much, and I will miss you a lot. Lastly, to my class, we did it. No one thought we could, but we sure proved them wrong. We overcame adversity and saved our awful reputation. Though, through it all, we never hung our head, but held it high and trusted in God that he would see us through. I love each and every one of you, and I will never forget any of you. Craig Allen Sandberg. <laughs> Craig played tennis at Jupiter High before transferring to Jupiter Christian, and he is also an accomplished musician performing piano solos during Senior Chapel and the Baccalaureate. Oh, oh. Craig will attend the Florida Culinary Institute, where he will become a chef. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm finally over. I finally graduated from high school. I'd just like to thank all the teachers who put up with me for two years at ACA. 
also my parents. I thank God most of all for helping me get through all the hard times. Thanks to him for being there as a friend. And also Tim, you've been a great friend this year. We had lots of fun this Saturday class, especially when JD popped in every day. Well, thanks to all, and all have a good night. Alita Marie Walker. <laughs> Alita has been involved in cheerleading, been a member of the Key Club, is a member of National Honor Society, was the sophomore class treasurer, the junior class president, and has been the varsity boys basketball statistician with Kelly for the last two years. She is this year's valedictorian. Alita will attend the University of Florida. Alita received the Kiwanis Scholarship of $1,000. She also received a $500 valedictorian scholarship from University of Florida. And she's also eligible for the Bright Future Scholar Award of $2,400 a year. Congratulations, Alita. Class of 19. 
1999, congratulations. A lot of hard work, a lot of success, a lot of challenges. We wish you well. And there's a lot of talk about the imprint the school's left on you, and let it not be forgotten, the imprint you've left on this school. We love you all and wish you the best. Godspeed. Let's pray. Father God, as we come before you this night, we are just thankful for the opportunity to have served each and every one of these students. And Lord, we just pray that you will reach their hearts for you. Lord, as they step forward tonight, we just pray that you'll continue to work in their lives. And Lord, while this class may not be mighty in numbers, we know that with your help, they'll be mighty in deeds. And Lord, as we come before you tonight, we just once again ask that if there's anyone here who has not accepted you as Lord and Savior, that this be the time when they accept you in their hearts. We love you, Jesus. And it's in your name that we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. Yeah.